Mark, there's five things landlords need to do and make sure they don't mess Start. up <laughs> before People. they pick a tenant. Yeah, I agree. I agree. And we're going to go through the five things in detail. We're going to talk, you know, we've had lots of investors in our day. We cover lots of landlord tenant board issues and go deep on them. So we're going to have a lot of good insight. So stick around uh, to the end of the video. We'll have some great information for you. And directly right under the description, right before the description, we have some links. If you'd like to get home evaluation, know the valuation of your home, or thinking about buying or selling a property, click the links and we'll be in contact with you. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to share, what do you think the top thing is that people do or don't do, or maybe definitely need to do? <laughs> from, I'm going to, I'm going to be ex experienced from calls that I've gotten the last 90 days from YouTube viewers, new investors. Number one is they try to save money and they do it themselves. They put the tenant themselves. They've never done this before but they want to save a month or two months for the rent and they just fill it. They just fill it. Yeah. So now, when, that's the thing that or I they're in a rush to fill it. They're in a rush to fill it. I see that too. Right. So that, that doesn't work out well, right? You can't deviate from a screening process. And, and I really believe in today's climate today is they should be adding any landlords. They should be doing even more due diligence just to safeguard the asset. Like, it, well, my client today said he they're buying their first home and he said um, he had to get more information to get a lease than he did to buy. Well, that's right. And that's a smart, that's a smart landlord. That's a smart way to do it because I think these people are rushing the process or if one category in the screening process yeah. checks off the box, then they just stop right there. So if credit comes back, they stop. Number two, meaning number two phone calls I've gotten this month was exactly like that. The investor hired a, a real estate agent to fill the vacancy. First thing they said was credit was outstanding. They stopped everything right there. As soon as they saw the credit report, they stopped the screening process. Needless to say, the tenant that occupied that vacancy messed over an investor in new market and caused about $60,000 of the damage at $28,000 in the rental arrears. Okay. So they didn't continue the process. And I really believe you have to continue the process. One more thing before we go through some of these. And number three to that is go to openroom.ca. You have to punch in addresses or names, see some outstanding orders come up in there. It's a great tool. Everybody should be using it. Or front lobby. There's another one too. My yeah, that's, yeah, front lobby too. You can report credit ratings and stuff on there, right? There's yeah. lots of companies out there, landlord groups today that can be bouncing ideas off. I really believe that every every investor, whether you're new or old, some you know some of these people could have you know properties, you know, a few properties, and they never left. All of a sudden, oh my god, I got to fill that vacancy now, and they they're out of the loop with things. They don't they're not up to date with LT, LTB issues. Yeah, they're not up to date with oh, it takes eight months to get rid of them. Like it goes well, on on yeah and so the number one thing that came up here was not conducting a thorough background check now what? skipping or conducting a superficial background check on potential tenants a background check reveals vital information now uh, normally around here you can't ask for a criminal record check no amy no you, you could you can but i have not heard it being too common no you know? so but previous landlord references um, and you know, depending, I always say, don't do the landlord, the, the last landlord, do the one before that, because the current landlord sometimes just wants to get rid of them and say, oh, they're fine. Cause they want them out. How about um, do both? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. So one thing that you just got highlighted here is missed payments. Okay. That's ask for bank statements. Yes. I want to see if you paid 3200 bucks a month, I want to see a year's worth of bank statement to show that it's left your account. Yeah, and and I always tell my oh. clients you can black oh. out everything else. They need they don't need to know how many times you went to LCBO. They don't need to know that. No, just black out everything but the payments. 
That's all you need to show mm -hmm. for it. And new people, this video is more geared for the new investor coming in, but you know, it keeps popping up with questions and stuff like that and phone calls. And it's, it's a big discussion that we're missing key information on the screening process. And they're just, it's unbelievable. So I always get a, 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 a rental application too. And if you look online, you can get the rental application that says the income and all those kind of things. Absolutely. And then, and then check everything. There should be references and everything else on there. Now references, a lot of times they just give their buddy. So that doesn't help you too much. Um, but you could drive by the property they're living now and see what kind of state it's in. How about you knock on the door and say hi? Yeah. Really considering you folks as tenants, but you know what? I just got a couple questions. Yeah. Oh, I see you have a dog. Would you be willing to pay security? deposit but you know whatever it could be anything yeah got to do this can you just imagine if that if that if that landlord investor and barry here that took those people from newmark would have drove down to newmarket and saw the condition of the house and saw and just whether they did drive by it was a jungle outside can you imagine if they just would have taken the extra 30 minute drive down the road yeah i know saving a lot of hassles well and i had this this number two i had this happen on the weekend my client's renting out part like a, an apartment in his house. And so number two is relying too much on first impressions. So yeah. he was like, well, making decision based solely on how a tenant presents themselves during the initial meeting or viewing, why it's a problem. Tenants might be good at selling themselves in person, but could have a history of late payments or other issues. So the thing is, he said, oh, Diane, they were really great and I really liked them and everything was good, but they want to move in in two weeks from Mississauga. Red flag. Red flag. I, yeah, right away. I right said, away. To, uh, why, why do they want to move that fast? Nobody wants to move that fast oh. unless they're in trouble somewhere along the way. That's right. And, and the other thing is, I said, well, what's their credit? Well, I haven't got that. I said, well, just because you like them doesn't mean you you don't get all of those other things. You still got to make sure you do all your due diligence. Like he thought they were great and he liked them. It, it was exactly what happened here. You meet them. Some people are very, very good. I've been snookered by it. We all have. I've been snookered by it when it, 15 years ago. When I, I wasn't the real estate business at the time. I was a fairly new investor. I was on the fence of selling it or renting it out. So I was out working and painting, et cetera. And so I filled up some some uh, time slots for people to come look at. Girl came, two kids dressed pretty good. Again, being a newbie, oh, they're great. Well, guess what that great turned into? A disaster. Paid first month's cash. Second, uh, last month's rent was in a check. Check bounced five days later, two big dogs. A boyfriend or a husband looked like he just got a Kingston pen. I went, holy shit, am I in for a ride? I knew right away. And it was a ride. It yeah. was a disaster. These are professionals. Yeah. So they prey on ads such as a Kijiji or Marketplace, and they see no representation. They're all over those ones first. So yeah. hire, hire, hire people to do this or get guidance, extremely guidance. And even if you like them, keep the emotion out and look at the paperwork. Because sometimes people suck you in. You they you like them and you think, oh, these people are great. And you know, oh, there's they have these kids and they're so stable and they're great people. You know nothing about them. <laughs> you don't know shit. And and mm -hmm. and they know how to present themselves in a very good manner, right? Ever. Do they ever? Do yes. they ever? And you know. <laughs> We know this and we keep saying this. The LTB is one-sided. It's for the tenants no matter what. So and and I've taken people with, with not the best credit mark, but yeah, me too. Say say it was a, a man and a woman split up, her credit's gone to hell because he's not paying the bills. Could be and her name's sure. on everything too. Sure. It happens. I've done, I've done that and I did I don't solely go on everything. Credit's not that great, but my ability to pay, strong in the references, meeting landlords. I don't call, you know, character references. Walk into their employer. Go ask their boss. Who cares? If somebody's been, and if somebody's, and if somebody's making 60 or 70,000 and the rent is 15 and they've been working there 20 years, 
You know what I mean? They have very stable job and they're making way more money than they need to pay the rent. You know, this, so that's actually number three, ignoring financial stability or creditworthiness, not properly vetting a tenant's financial situation or failing to check their credit score and payment history. Yeah. So a tenant who cannot demonstrate financial responsibility may struggle to pay rent on time, which can lead to late payments, eviction, of course. Um, and like we just talked about, it's not only just the credit score, it's what got them there. I have young people sometimes that didn't pay a cell phone bill from when they were 19 years old and their credit is screwed. Yeah, it could sit there. Yeah. But have they paid their rent? Do they make good money? Like how much money are they making and can they pay their rent? Yeah, but I, like I'm big on I'm 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 big on it all now. Like I again, when I was I've been under that business now for eight years. Um, if I was today, if you don't got good credit, sorry, see you later. Yeah, That's, I know. I'm I'm not I'm not willing to deviate from anything anymore. Back then, that it was the ease that you know within you know really within thirty or forty five days you you're at a tribunal. Now that's turned to eight months, right? right. So. <laughs> don't cut any corners we cut some corners back in the day in a sense but you know we the the time frames is it, it was a lot different and you know yeah we you know i had a big heart for some of these people and they worked out well they were great tenants but yeah. the one showed up at to bentley with the in, you know mom and two kids looking great and you just went through a story of one of your clients or whatever you know oh they want to move in two weeks that's the biggest red flag imaginable there, there's an eviction date sitting there and they're going to be gone. So they need a place. And they're going to pray in the most easiest ad and tell this one's the sucker. Let's go get them. That's it. Yeah. There's yeah. no sure in this shit. It's, it, well, it's and, and the thing is, I noticed like some of my most successful investors, they're just like no nonsense. Like there is no emotion at all. They don't, you know, they don't, it's all business. I look at the numbers. I look at the credit. I look at their income. I look, they don't give a shit how nice they are. They don't, they can, they, you know, I get more sucked into the heart of the matter than they do. That They just don't. They're very, very clinical about it. And that's how you have to be. Have to be that way. You have to be. And, you know, it just, it, it just baffles me that someone can go out, say in Barry here, buy an $800,000 property, a million dollar property, and put a tenant there. And not even go through any checks. And this is a regular occurrence. Or to save three or five thousand dollars. That savings that you're gone is going to be gone in three months. I try to tell my clients that all the time, we Mark. Destroyed homes. And we've seen it. There's no repercussions. No. You know, but you're better off waiting a month or two to get a good one. You have to. And to that point, put some money away. Don't go renting out your place to have three or four months with a mortgage payment sitting in your bank account. Maybe five. I'd go eight today screw it because it could change so fast right well it could that it, way and even when you get a mortgage on a rental property with a bank they put a percentage for vacancy mm -hmm. for sure but because there's always going to be months that it's empty yeah at times not many but i never count them but there, there, there could I be. had a couple months here and there while well, I'm waiting to get another tenant and I got to clean and fix before I can right. even right. Eat one. Right. Yeah. Stuff like that. Yeah. It could be a 30 day turnover or 60 day, depending on what needs to be done. But yeah, I, I think a lot of new investors don't put that money aside today for situations like that. You got to do it, folks. Don't mm -hmm. cut a corner. I'm telling not, not in today's rental game. There's no corners cut. Now, this one is really good too. Failing to set clear expectation and lease terms. So what they're kind of saying, you need the detailed lease agreement. Now in Ontario, everybody, you have to do the Ontario standardized lease. That came in four or five years ago. You Google it. It's a form. You fill it out. Everything's on there. You can only do a key deposit for the amount that you can actually, it would cost for you to replace either the fob, the key, the right. lock, whatever it is you have, you can't be charging $500 or $800. You can't make up, a, you know, some crazy number. And in Ontario, you cannot charge a security deposit either, Mark. Now, a lot of times if there's an animal, 
people will ask for one. And if the tenant really wants the property, they'll pay for it. But legally, you're it's against the law. I know. I know. Yeah. And if you don't, if you say, okay, if you're a day late or anything bounces, it's an NSF charge of $50 or wherever it is. And the Ontario standardized lease, it says $25 is the maximum you can charge when an NSF charge now is 50. Yeah. Yeah. Not right. Yeah. Well, to avoid all those folks, just follow some of these basic things. And, well, and basically tell them, okay, like if, if I don't get paid and if you're a day late, you tell me you're going to be a day late, fine. You're two days late. You're getting an N4. You have to, you have to jump on that right away. Yeah. So my, one of my And clients, let them know that beforehand. Right. But this so, is how, this is the expectation. This is how it's going to be. It doesn't matter. You're going to tell them, but you can tell them if you want. I know what I'd be doing. If they're two days late, you don't mind helping out and saying, great. Even a week late, no problem. After the eighth day comes along, here's your N4. The process has to start right away. Yeah. Right. A past client, I talked with a past client yesterday and his tenant's two, two months late. Two months. He allowed it. Should have gave them the, right away when it happened. Yeah. He, yeah. Usually he's a couple of months late, but he said, I've been a good guy. I had him for four or five years. Now he's two months. And then he goes, now I know my rights. <laughs> oh God. So then, it, you know, he stopped paying right then. You know where it's going. Offer him some money, make him ask him to leave. I'll go get you first. Here, I'll give you first and last. I told him, go give him first and last month's rent. Get him, let him find a place. If it's five k, give him five k, and tell him you'll write off the other two months he's lost because you're not getting paid for the next eight months. Well, that's the thing. Yeah, it, it becomes economics at this point. So, you know, it, it's tough. So, you know, there should be no more shit. It just should be cut and dry. You have to follow those rules. As soon as you yes. don't, what happens? One month turns into two. And then it's then, then you you lost 60 days. Well, oh. and what did I say earlier? Your client is getting sucked in the same thing so many people do. 100%. Their heart. The heart, right? Well, I like him. I've had him for a long time. He's a nice guy. Yeah. This is well. a business. And my the the my my people that are landlords, my investor clients, most of them, their heart is tax, man. They don't mess around. Can't. There's no messing around. This is a no-nonsense business today. This is uh, a business. It's not about, you know, being nice to people, unfortunately, because if you give them an inch, sometimes they take a mile. And once, once you set that precedent of, oh, yeah, okay, everything's okay, it just gets worse and worse. Nice. <sighs> Well, number five, overlooking the importance of references. Oh, God. People well, did Mark, your client in Newmarket, if they would have actually ca uh, called, if the new people would have actually called the prior landlord, they would have known what was going on. Well, they, it was a fraudulent reference, right? And from, from that experience was that she kept forcing and saying, well, the credit was great. But yeah, the credit was great because they weren't paying other bills. That's why it was so great. Yeah, they paid all their bills, just not their rent. And these people are professionals, so they know the game. They know the 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 screening stops once they see a high credit score. It stops. These guys are all stars. Look, honey, they have a credit score of eight hundred five. We need them. It all stops. You can't, right? Yeah. Why do they? Why do you think why that credit score is so good? One, they 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 know when they go to the next place, that's what the the new landlord's going to want. We want to see your credit score. Checks off great. You guys pay the bills. They wouldn't. They didn't. They wouldn't. Didn't ask them for any. Show us the rent. Your, the rent was twenty seven hundred bucks. Great. We like your eight hundred five. Can you please provide us the the last? You've been there for eighteen months. Uh, please provide us supply me with eighteen statements or whatever showing that that twenty seven hundred bucks came out of your account every month. Yeah, I want to see it. It stopped. So and look at the mess. Look at the mess where this goes on. So there was a crack, and these professionals know it. We're not doing this to, we're just doing this to educate people. So, cause we, we see so much of it. Yeah. And references, you have to be careful. Like I don't mind doing employment references. Oh, you should do it all. Because if you call an employer, you know, you're getting, you're calling a business. Do, do you know what I mean? It can't be fraudulent. No, go into place employment. I would, if I was getting back into this business today, Dan, here's what I would do. I'd go to their employer, one, see, make sure they're working great. 
I asked us to see the supervisor manager. Hey, what can you tell me about Sally? She's thinking about renting a place of mine. Great. Thanks. I would go to their house automatically. I would go to their house to see how they live. I don't care. Show up unannounced. I, I would do it. I would do it. I know. And what else would I do that would be crazy? See, for me, personal reference. I, come in, I would take a tour of your house. I would. I said, take a tour of your house. Will you invite me in to take a tour of your house? There you go. Mm -hmm. Why not? I would. Well, that and that personal reference thing on that list, I don't like it necessarily. It's no good. It's not good. You it can't go personal good. references. You got to go back to the landlords. And if they if have your brother or, or their sister or whatever, and they bullshit on who they are. Well, for sure, for sure. But professionals anyway, do. Well, they know how. They know. They know how to get the newbies, the investors. Right? We were all there. Go to Kijiji Marketplace. Oh, not represented. Because if it's an agent represented, you've got to have some, you know, other information. And I still, I'm not a big fan of using real estate agents for investment properties to, to, to find tenants. They cut corners. There's not a lot of money into it. So they're not putting, they're putting very minimal effort. They're not looking after your best interest. And even though we're real estate agents, I'm saying that because I don't do them for that reason. Not the reason I don't do them is because I don't ever want to be to kill a relationship or a business relationship with it, with an investor client and put someone bad because we things can go bad, right? Oh, I've I've put I put bad ones in where now, mind you, bad. It's it's subjective, I guess. They were there for five years. They paid their rent on time every single time, but they trashed the friggin' house. And when he sold the house, they wouldn't leave. Right. Now I wasn't the it like a Remax agent brought them and I was representing the, the like the landlord and the other agent was representing the tenant. So I didn't know them personally, but you, you, they had great credit, but they do. They always have paid the rent everywhere they lived. Yeah. Well, there, but that's, they crossed the friggin' house and they wouldn't leave. And we sold it and we had eight months of nonsense. Right. So that's why people should just do surprise visits. Can you invite me to show me your home? And he yelled at me. Yeah, well, that looks well you got these people, Diane. I said, well, actually, I didn't. That's why I don't do them. Yeah, I, I know. I don't put them in. I don't, I don't want to be, I don't want to kill a relationship with an investor client. I don't. I don't. It's not worth it. It's not worth that relationship. Hire a property manager. You can bounce ideas off me. Anyone can bounce anything off me. No problem. But I won't. I won't be that. I won't be the lead in finding a tenant. Ever. Well, and the problem is, and I and I always when I do help my clients because I do once in a while, I'll tell them, listen, I don't know any more than you do. I mean, I'm looking at the papers. I'm making the the calls, and they look great. Are they snowing me? Maybe. Yeah. And wow. are, are the people I'm calling full of shit? Maybe. Maybe we, that part, that's why it's not foolproof, right? Or even, yeah, okay, go do a surprise visit. Go knock on some neighbor's doors. There's neighbors know what's, what's going on. Neighbors know the rental units in their in their, in their their area or on their street. They know it. They'll let you know. Well, the last <laughs> the last one I did, they were in a condo building, so it was screwed. Yeah, well, a little tougher there. But okay, I think I we can't tell. Points. No, that part we can't. Um, Super tenamite. But anyway, I think we've covered some good points and gave some some good suggestions yeah. for the viewers today. So anyone has questions, hey, reach out. I'm always happy to answer any questions or run a scenario by me. I'm all good. Um, hit, hit the, the like. Go ahead. Yeah, hit the like, subscribe, or drop us a comment if there's something you want us to do. Yeah. All right. Okay. Perfect. See ya. See ya.